What are the best resources for information on graphics for ACS publications? Um, they should follow the, the guidelines that are available um, at our website at pubs.acs.org. There you'll find links to the Author and Reviewer Resource Center, the ACS Style Guide, and various other publishing tools to find out information about uh, resolution that's appropriate for each of the different types of graphics you may be submitting. What are the options for preparing and submitting graphics? Uh, you can submit your graphics in a word processing document or you can submit the in individual graphics files or both. Uh, it's important if you're submitting the individual graphics files to name them according to the function in the paper such as figure one, scheme one, rather than the scientific uh, name or con compound name. Using the proper resolution will help to ensure consistent presentation. Additionally, if you're working together with um, other researchers uh, or a research team, uh, having making sure that everyone has the same information in terms of font size that they'll be using, graphic sizes, and making sure that they are submitting their graphics consistently will also help. When preparing graphics, it's important to consider the fonts that you're using. Um, decorative fonts or uh, unusual or non-standard fonts can be problematic in the production process and cause translation issues when the graphics are received on this end. Using standard fonts such as Helvetica, Times New Roman, uh, or Arial will help to make sure that your graphics are how you presented them when you submitted them. The ACS has standards for preparing chemical structures. Uh, you can find the, that information at, at our website, pubs.acs.org. That information is also in the ACS style guide, and also check your individual notice to authors or information for authors for additional information. What recommendations do you have for the table of contents graphic or graphical abstract? Or if your journal does require a TOC or abstract graphic, it's very important to submit that with the initial process to not delay any time to publication. And it's really important to think of a graphic that is very eye-catching to the reader, um, as this will summarize the paper and be the first thing that they see, and to avoid any small type or um, too small of detail. Um, due to the fact that a lot of the graphics in your paper may be a little too detailed, it'd be best to create a special, a new graphic for the abstract, something that can be bright and colorful and eye-catching and probably not have as much detail as a graphic that you would have actually within the paper where that's with the content. What are some of the common mistakes you see in graphics? When preparing charts and graphs, make sure to look at the text in your graphics and that it's consistent with the text in, in your paper. Uh, look at your axis labels, uh, the numbers and the units, and make sure that everything is consistent. A common mistake that's made is not um, having the correct resolution or different sizing that are appropriate for the specific journal. It's important to submit these graphics with the appropriate resolution so it does not slow down the graphics process or affect any of the, the quality of the graphic. What happens if I submit graphics with the wrong specifications? Um, we get a lot of graphics submitted in, in Word documents, which is how we prefer them to be submitted. But when you're saving the TIFF files to place into your Word documents, it's best to save them at high resolution. We sometimes receive files at low resolutions. For instance, on this, this uh, image here is only a 72 DPI image. So when, when we get sent an image of that quality, we're stuck with that quality throughout the process. For color images, that's 300. For grayscale, 600, and for bitmap, black and white is 1,200. And then as we go through the process, it'll be, that'll create a much higher quality final image for the journals. 